I will show you how you can find cheap flight tickets using web scraping with the JavaScript. By the end of this video, our script will be capable of scraping kiwi.com website. It will find weekend flight tickets for under 100 bucks to any destination and provide us the screenshots with the details so that you could enjoy a little bit of sun and sightseeing on your weekends. Web scraping is the process of using software to extract content and data from any website. Let's start with initiating a new NPM project and installing Playwright library. Its primary purpose is end-to-end -end testing for modern web apps, but it also can be used for web scraping. Create index.js file and add an async main function for our script. Import Playwright, then we can launch the Chrome browser. I have set the headless option to false so that we could see the actual browser, but you could also set it to true and everything would happen in the headless browser. Open a new page and navigate to kiwi.com. One thing to note, web scraping falls in a gray area. Some websites have protection against bots, which usually tracks your behavior in a browser. And if you are clicking stuff way too fast, your IP address can be banned. To avoid that, we will be using timeouts after each interaction on a website. I set a timeout for 10 seconds. Of course, you could lower it to something like a second, but I just wanted to be safe. Okay, so after navigating to kiwi.com, we will be presented with a model to accept cookies. To click the accept button, we need a way to identify it. This can be done by inspecting it and searching for a selector. It's best to use ID or data test attributes for that. In this case, we can see that this button has an ID perfect. Now we can click this button. Page.locator creates an element locator. It takes a selector that describes how to find an element in the page. We can pass accept button ID. IDs must be prepended with a hashtag. Once we have a locator, we can click it and again do a little pause with the timeout to avoid being detected by site's protection. Next, we want to click on destination input, inspect it to find a selector. We can use this data test attribute. Selectors by attributes must be surrounded by brackets. Next, we want to click on the first option in a dropdown to search for tickets to any destination. Sometimes, when inspecting, you can go up by a few levels on a DOM tree to find the best selector. We will use this data test attribute. Click on it. Let's uncheck this checkbox as it will open a new tab and we don't want that. In case you are unable to find a good selector for an element, you can locate it with just a text value. Now it's time to press explore button to kick off the ticket search. Repeat the same process to find a locator and click on it. By default, results are sorted by popularity. We want to find the cheapest flight, so let's click on sorting button and select cheapest sorting option. This is one more way to write a selector. We can say locate a button that has a text popularity. Click on it and press an element with the text cheapest. Next, we want to extract information about the destination city and the price. This card has a data test attribute, picture card content and text information is in a H3 tag. So we can create a locator to find all H3 elements with the parent element that has data test picture card content attribute. To extract the text, we use locator.allTextContents method. It will return an array. Console log it and close the browser in the end by calling browser.close. Okay, let's run this baby. Whoops, we have used the import playwright syntax at the very beginning, but we haven't declared our project to be a module. You can do that in package.json. Let's try again. That's great. We have scraped the site for the cheapest flights to any location, anytime, and printed the result in the console. But that's not enough, right? We want to see the actual dates of the flights, and since I'm planning to actually use this web scraping script myself, departure and return dates set to anytime are not ideal either. I would rather find a cheap weekend trip at this point. And by cheap, I mean less than 100 bucks. When web scraping, it's always a good idea to pay close attention to URLs, as sometimes it can save some manual steps of clicking buttons. Now, if we would look more closely at our URL, we could see that it contains departure city, destination city, departure date, return date, and sorting by cheapest flights. That means we can eliminate some steps from our script by simply passing a proper URL. 
So instead of clicking on destination input, selecting destination anywhere, pressing search button and clicking to sort by the cheapest, we could just navigate to this URL directly. Let's remove the text extraction for now. Create a default timeout constant as we will be doing a bit more actions this time. As I mentioned, we want to find weekend fly deals, so we need a function that returns upcoming weekends array. It accepts number of weekends as an argument, so let's say we want to get 16 upcoming weekends. To deal with the dates more easily, I will install DateFNS library. Create an empty weekend array, which we will populate in a second. Create current date variable with new date object as a value. We will populate weekends array in a simple for loop from 0 to number of weekends and return that array at the end. Set the current date to next Friday. Next Friday is a helper function from datefns library. So now current date holds a date object of next upcoming Friday. We want our results array to be populated with formatted date strings, therefore we need to format it. So const Friday equal to format date and pass the current date. Import format helper from datefns and create a function named format date, which will format the given date to string. Now for Sunday, we do almost the same, but additionally we need to add a couple of days to current date. Finally, we push Friday and Sunday strings to weekends array. So now the upcoming weekends variable will hold this value. Next, we want to iterate all upcoming weekends in a for loop and move web scraping logic inside. The construct current weekend object to rename Friday and Sunday to from and to variables and use them in the URL instead of any time. Since we will be opening the kiwi.com multiple times for each weekend, we need to make adjustments for cookie accept logic, as this button will be displayed only the first time. Create cookies accepted boolean variable outside of the loop and click cookies accept button only if it was not accepted yet. Also, let's drop h3 from city's card locator. Now we want to iterate through all of the city cards. We can get the card count number from a city card locator with the count method. Then do a for loop, get a current city card locator with city card locator dot nth and pass current loop index i. Now we want to check if the price on the city card is less than 100 bucks. So we extract text content from it similarly as we did before. Text content contains more text than just a price, so we find the index of dollar sign in that string and take a substring from that position plus one till the very end. And of course, convert this price string to a number. Next, we define our price threshold. In our case, it's 100. And check if the price is less than a threshold. If so, we click on that city card. We will be navigated to details page with a list of different flight options to that city. We need to find the cheapest option, so press on cheapest sorting button. Now we will extract this destination city name to a variable. Again, take the text content dot substring from index of my city plus its text length to the index of from and replace spaces with dashes. We will use this city name for a screenshot file name in case it's a cheap flight. Now we want to get a locator for this whole card by data test results card wrapper attribute. As you can see, there are multiple result card wrappers, but since they are sorted by cheapest, we will take the first one with page.selector.first method. Then we one more time want to check if the price is really below our threshold. We can chain the locators, which essentially means that your next locator will search for the elements within the first locator. So cheapest flight card locator dot locator and pass a selector to find the first div child in result card price element and take text content from it. It will return the price with a dollar sign in the front. So go ahead and remove it and convert the string to a number. If the actual price is less than 100, we want to take a screenshot of the flight results card. To do that, all you have to do is call a screenshot method on the cheapest flight card locator and give a path string where to save it and how to name it. Finally, we can navigate back to check flights to other cities and continue with the loop. That's basically it. Now I will run the script and we will check what cheap flight deals for the upcoming weekends it will find. Nice, as you can see we found 17 flight tickets for less than 100 bucks, the cheapest one being for only $33 to Oslo, Norway. Alright, that's it. I will leave the link to the source codes in the video description. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments down below. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. We would love to have you on board. Thank you for watching and see you next time.